All right. Hope you guys are doing good. Well, today we're going to turn this into this using Mid Journey, Photoshop, and Stable Diffusion. Let's get into it. First step is to create this image in Mid Journey. I jumped over to Mid Journey and I created a Jordan sneaker. And this is the prompt that I used a butterfly wings made of Jordan 6 retro, symmetrical design, style raw, Chaos 20, AR 16 by 9, version 6. Originally, I was trying to make the sneaker into a butterfly wing. For some strange reason, Mid Journey just gave me a Jordan 6 sneaker. And at the end of the prompt, I just used the style raw in order to make the sneaker look much more realistic. There's a default setting and then this style raw gives you much more realistic images. And I use Chaos 20 because I wanted different variations of the sneaker. So if you keep Chaos at zero, you get the same image in all four images that Mid Journey renders out for you. AR means aspect ratio, so I chose 16 by 9. And the V6 stands for version 6. And here's a little animation on how I took the sneaker from Mid Journey, brought it into Photoshop, cut it out, and made the butterfly with the sneaker. We're going to jump into Stable Diffusion. Uh, put a link down there where you can install Stable Diffusion. I have Stable Diffusion fired up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab that image we created in Photoshop and we're going to drag it into this area right here that says drop image here or click upload. We're going to drag this image that we created in Photoshop into this area right here. Cool. So what, what Stable Diffusion is going to do, it's going to take this image and it's going to try to make another image based on your prompts. So if you say a scary monster, it's going to try to create a scary monster out of these sneakers. But in this case, we want to create a butterfly. So that's what it's going to do. So we drag that image in here. Let me go into this text file, grab the prompts that I used. So let's put the positive prompt here. I wrote masterpiece, high quality photo of a butterfly with wings that look like Jordan 6 retro. I wrote something else. It wasn't giving me what I wanted. So it just kept on messing around with the prompt until I got a prompt that started doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So this is just not a one click situation. It took me some time to finally get this prompt and it's a simple prompt, but it, it does what it needs to do, right? Cool. So I have this negative prompt here that we're going to throw into here. Boom. There you go. Uh, also, let me uh, mention I'm using Juggernaut Reborn. Uh, let's go to the Civitai site. Civitai, let's go into Juggernaut Reborn. Boom. So now we're in Juggernaut Reborn. So this is the one that I'm using right now to create the butterfly image. Now, when you first jump into Stable Diffusion, you're not going to know what the heck you're doing. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I was introduced to Civitai or Civit AI. Right. And this is where I get all my models from. And thank God they're all free. Now, when you download a model, they're going to be super big. They're going to be huge around five gigs, six gigs. What you want to do is you want to come here and read about what the model is doing. Right. What is this model about and how to use the model? So right now it says 512 by 768, which is the width and height of the image what sampler to use, what steps, what CFG, how to do a high res fix or upscale on this. So that's what I normally do. So when I'm about to create an image, I make sure I use those same settings, the sampler settings, the step settings. There's usually a width and height that you have to follow whenever you're creating these images using a certain model. So you want to follow that, especially if you're downloading a specifically trained model. So cool. We have our positive prompt in there, our negative prompt in there. We have our image that we want to update and create something new from it. And then we have our sampler. We have our steps and then we have our width and height. And then we have this denoising strength. See this denoising strength. What it does is the stronger you put it, the more it changes the image. The lower it is, the more it sticks to your image. So you have to find that balance, right? We want these sneakers to look like butterflies. 
So we have to stray away from the image a little bit. So I found that 0.57 was good enough to stray away from the image, but still give us enough of the image. So, and another thing too, I ran this a whole bunch of times and it was giving me the butterfly and it looked good, but I was like, man, I want this to look more like a butterfly. What the heck is going on? So I decided to use control net. I used the same image in control net. So now let's go to control net. Let's enable the control net, enable pixel perfect, go down to tile. So what I did was I used the tile control net in order to use the image twice. So we are using the first image for image to image, and then we are using the tiled image in order to give it extra power, extra oomph. But I figured I was like, okay, I want to create a butterfly, but I still wanted to maintain the structure and the aesthetic of the sneakers. So what I did was I came here and I uploaded that same image. Boom. So I, I used that same image. So we have this image here. Then we have this image here with the tile control net. And then I went down here and I clicked on control net is more important. So then I ran this a couple of times until I got it right. And another important thing about this is the seed number right here. Now I have the seed number from the design I created before I created this YouTube tutorial. Let's say I copy this real quick and I put it into a text file, right? And I go back down to a random seed and we run this right a couple of times to show you what's going on. Boom. So we get this butterfly here, which doesn't look like the one I created before. But if you keep on running it, right, you get cool looking butterflies. So it's a random seed. So at any time you keep on running this generation, it's a different design every time. And you, it's up to you to pick the one that you like or a couple that you like and mix and match them back in Photoshop. Yo, I like these wings or I like the eyes here or I like the body in this one. It's up to you to bring it into a photo editing software and just like Frankenstein the joint back. And then once you Frankenstein it again, what you can do is take that image, bring it back into Stable Diffusion and run this same process, which is image to image. So now let's run this without the control net tile to see what happens. So let's unable that and let's run this because I just want to show you what happens when you don't use control net tile right there you go so you see how we're losing the structure of the sneaker without using control net tile and my reasoning for using control net tile is to maintain the structure of course we want to turn it into a butterfly right that's why we raise the denoise strength up but then we want to maintain the structure of those sneakers so now let's turn control net back on Boom, we turn control net back on and we run this again. Right? So as you can see, control net tile really helps to maintain the structure of those sneakers while adding the butterfly wings to the sneaker, right? So there you go. So that's the main reason why I use control net tile is to maintain the structure of the sneakers while raising the neat denoise strength up to get that butterfly in there. So now let's bring back the seed from the design that I actually like and let's paste that seed in here and let's run this again. And bam, that is the design. This, I love this. You know why I love this? Look at this, there's two pieces of the butterfly wings, which is great. The upper piece, the bottom piece, you got the upper piece, you have this shadow right here and then you have the bottom piece. The shape is irregular. You have the body. And I don't know what the hell this is. This is like bunny ears, but I thought it was cool. But one thing that sold me about this image was the intricacies in the wings. I was like, ah, oh, this is what the heck I'm talking about. Those nice little patterns. I was like, I can still see that these are Jordan sneakers, but then I still can see that this is a butterfly. I found a perfect balance between the sneaker design and the butterfly design. So remember, 
everybody's oh my god ai all you do is prompt and then you get whatever it is that's easy that's cheating then no, this wasn't just one click button this was iterations and messing around going into photoshop designing bringing that design back in messing around finding the right prompt then going okay this doesn't work okay let me see how i can use control net so this is not a one click solution. Now, the next step is to refine this. And the best way I found to upscale this image was with Crea AI. They have a uh, free credits on their website. All right. So now we in Crea.ai. So I uploaded the image of the butterfly we created in stable diffusion. And what Crea did was it analyzes the image. It creates a prompt and then it uses that prompt to enhance the image and I, I don't know how this works but you have a whole bunch of cool sliders here which is the strength slider which is kind of like the noise slider and stable diffusion you have the resemblance slider which is how much do you want it to resemble the image that you gave it and then you got the clarity which i think is probably like a sharpen so if you look this is the image i gave Crea, and this is the enhanced version now if you notice the enhanced version looks sharp you get more details in the wings, but we can bring this into Photoshop and we can just clean it up. Now, one thing I didn't mention, you could upscale your images in Stable Diffusion. You could upscale them two times, four times. I want to be able to take my image, upscale it, add details to it, but not move too far away from the main image, but still add details. So until I find a proper workflow in Stable Diffusion, I'm just going to use Crea because it does an amazing job. There's no fuss. For the most part, the first try gets me to a really nice detailed image. So that's why I use Crea. In the next step, I'm going to show you how I clean this image up, put it on a background that I created in Mid Journey. So remember, we started off with a Midjourney Jordan and it, in this part of the process, I went back to Midjourney and I created a wooden floor. Think about this as a mashup of a whole bunch of different tools. You got Photoshop, you got Midjourney, you got Stable Diffusion. So you have all these tools that you can bring together to create amazing ideas. All right, so now we're back in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this image using the subject select tool. It does a great job at cutting out this image. Back in the days, I would go in there with the pen tool and get precise. And what I'm doing here is I'm resizing the canvas so I can make it into a poster size. Because I figured, yo, this is dope. But this image looks really good on its own. So I decided to create a poster. And here I'm dragging the mid journey wooden texture. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize it and attempt to composite the butterfly onto the wooden floor. So I'm just going to apply a levels effect and brighten up that floor because right now I just feel like it's a little too dark and I want there to be some kind of contrast between the butterfly and the wooden floor. And then I'm adding a subtle drop shadow underneath the butterfly just so it can seem like it's on the floor. Then I added a second drop shadow. So the smaller version of the shadow is supposed to be a little bit closer to the floor. And then the other shadow is just supposed to be bigger, but much more subtle. So it's a cool thing that in Photoshop, you can add two different drop shadows or you can combine different layer styles. Back in the days, you had to rasterize a layer. You had to take those two drop shadows, combine them. And here you go. This is the design I came up with. So I, I thought the design looked cool, but I'm curious to see what Crea does to enhance the image. We're taking this design that we created in Photoshop and we're bringing it right back into Crea AI. If Crea gives us something awesome, then we're closer to finalizing the design. So let's check it out. All right. So cool. So I'm looking at this image and I'm like, all right, this image looks cool, but let's see if we can get something a little bit better. I'm just curious, right? If it's free, let's run it again. So I bumped up the AI strength a little bit. I bumped it up to 75 to see what Crea comes up with. So let's let this render and see what Crea does. All right, let's check out the image. Yeah, look at that. Man, it added some really good details, man. 
Look at those wings. It cleaned up the drop shadow and made it look like it's really on the floor. And this is why this, this workflow is so cool. You could just take something that's already designed and just make it better. So now I'm going to take this image that I really like, and then I'm going to throw it into upscale and I'm going to upscale this by two times because it doesn't need to get bigger than this. So I used one of their algorithms and then I double upscaled it, which should upscale it by four times. And it took forever, bro. I don't know how long this took. Anyways, I'm going to fast forward through this and I'm going to show you the result. For my testing, it doesn't really refine the image like Kriya does. It just upscales it, bumps it up. And after that, you can just do whatever you want to do with it. You can print it, do whatever. But anyway, here, I want to zoom into the image and check out the detail because I'm curious. I'm like, okay, what did this upscale do? So if you look into it, boom. It really bumped up that the quality. If you're really looking for it, there's also seams. So you don't really see them unless you zoomed in and ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody really zooming into images like that. Come on. Now, if it's blatant, then you got to go back into Photoshop and clean it up. But other than that, nah, I think this looks good the way it looks. First of all, the combination of enhancing in Korea and then bring it into upscale and just upscaling it and bumping it up is cool. The fact that I can composite something in Photoshop and I can take that design and run it image to image just to refine the design. The design doesn't always have to be awesome in the beginning. You could create the foundation and then run that with a prompt to guide it and then you could get something awesome. So I love this iterative workflow where it's like you can keep on building and building until you get something that looks good. So there you go. I hope you guys learned something. I learned a lot. I, I learned what works and what doesn't work. Every single day I learn something new. I'm going to link everything that I know down in the text section. I thought it was fun. If anything, leave questions in the comments. Hit me up, email me or whatever. Yeah, man. So the next one, peace.